Welcome back. It's time now for Media Watch, and for that I'm joined by James Creed. And James, last night we were talking about Disney films, but hey, we're changing the <laughs> subject somewhat today. We're still sticking to films, however. It's a different tone. A, a very different tone. The trailer for a movie about Dominic Strauss-Kahn has been released, and it's pretty provocative. So much so that when you showed it to me, I had to cover my eyes at some point. You had to wipe your brow in it. It was, it was, <laughs> it was distressingly graphic. Now, two years ago today, Annette... A man was arrested in New York and everybody was wondering what exactly did go on in room 2806 of the Sofitel Hotel in New York. Can you tell me what your problems are? So there you go. Uh, that's uh, one <laughs> uh, one extract from uh, the the trailer. We had to edit it pretty uh, pretty heavily in it because it's it's pretty graphic. It's a very very graphic trailer. A lot. Of, I think it's not really for uh, viewing by children, shall we say. That is Abel Ferrara, the director who is behind that. Uh, Gerard Depardieu, as you saw, is playing the role of Dominique Strauss-Kahn, and uh, it's all about what happened in room 2806 but, of the Sofitel Hotel. I have to say, I mean, talk about sort of a gift for everybody. I mean, the reality is what sort of material this this director had to work with. I mean, clearly, you, as much as it is very sexually graphic, the reality is that's what it was all about. Well, do you know that it was two years ago today that he was arrested, Annette, and that's partly why they put that trailer up online today. What was happening two years ago today also? The Cannes Film Festival. And as a lot of the analysis has been saying, reality completely outstripped fiction uh, two years ago when all eyes turned to New York City and away from Cannes uh, because people were more interested in the real-life drama of what exactly had gone on. This man who was going to run for president in France and here he was in the process of just having this massive fall from grace. Let's have a look at another extract from the film, which, uh, or rather an extract from that trailer which shows the scene in uh, the bedroom. What do you prefer, play golf? Do you know who I am? So what exactly has been the reaction in the press to the film so far? All right, well, let's take a look at this headline. Gasps, sighs, sex and disco. That's uh, L'Express's headline, which pretty much sums up uh, the trailer. Annette, uh, now it's, it, they were in filming. It was at the Tribeca Film Festival, I believe, as well, uh, before going down to Cannes. I think the public won't get to see it until next year, in fact. And uh, the actress who played um, his wife, or his now ex-wife, uh, Anne Sinclair, is uh, also featured there, Jacqueline Bissette. Uh, and I, I, apparently it was meant to be Isabel Adjani, but she pulled out because she felt it really was infringing on the private lives of uh, these two individuals. You see, the thing is, if we were to backtrack to two, two and a half years ago, no one could ever have imagined a movie like this about a prominent French politician. There was an amerta really in in French society about the private lives of politicians, some of it with good, um, you know, intentions behind it, uh, having a separation between the public and the private sphere. But the fact that Dominique Strauss-Kahn having the private life that he had, thought he could run for president and that none of this would come out is really telling of how different uh, the perception of private life and, and where the divide with public life was just two years ago. It was a right? watershed in French politics, yeah, absolutely, wasn't it? Absolutely, that's exactly it. And just to show you the, the extent to which he's become a cult figure now, Dominique Strauss-Kahn, there was also a book... Um, if I could fast forward to it, uh, there was this article, of course, famously by Jay Epstein in the New York Review of Books. What really happened to Dominic Strauss-Kahn? There was a, the, a book that came out just a couple of months ago by a, another of his lovers, uh, Marcella Jacob, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, there she is. And uh, there was, you know, there were even club nights uh, across France. This is somewhere down near Aix-en-Provence, room 2806, called after uh, Dominic Strauss-Kahn and that infamous event. So... You know, it's been a plays, plays, books, theatre and now a movie. And we'll see how it goes at the box office. So I have to say, given the rather graphic images that I was witness to in that trailer, phew. Yes, exactly. <laughs> OK, changing subject. 
to another French politician, but now something quite different indeed. And, of course, we're talking about the current President, Francois Hollande. He had a press conference earlier today and he explained why he doesn't tweet. That's right. And uh, I think we have some pictures of what was a sort of a good humoured moment when, you know, in the middle of all of these policy questions, uh, you had a question as to why he doesn't tweet. Let's roll some of those pictures because you can see that it's it's very good humoured. You can see that, uh, you know, the ministers are, you know, laughing, etc. Do we have those pictures? Just have a look at them. Um, and what he essentially says is, uh, listen, I'm, I'll think about the proposal because the journalist says, why don't you tweet? Now, I think one of the reasons he doesn't tweet is that his, his uh, the first lady, Valerie Trierweller, infamously put her foot in it when she tweeted in the first few weeks or months of the presidency and referred to um, Francois Hollande's ex, Ségolène Royal, who was running to become uh, an MP at the time. And in any case, uh, the first lady supported the opponent of her her partner's ex. Anyway, it's very complicated. And so very it was French. This, yes. So he said, look, you know, maybe that's the reason why I'm so bad in the polls because I'm not tweeting, etc. Now, in terms of what the reaction was online to this marathon two and a half hour press conference, you had, of course, uh, his opponents very much in an organised manner at the UMP party headquarters, as is often the case now, where you have the war room, people ready uh, over, ha, you know, standing over their computers ready to tweet anything negative about anything he says. So the, the buzzword from the opposition side has been échec Hollande, right? Failure, Hollande, the failure. And right back to the 5th of May, uh, when it, people were talking about his first year in office or the anniversary of his first year in office, you saw posters like that one circulating on social media. On the other side of the political divide, you had uh, the Elysee and everyone who was trying to kind of generate positive comment for the president on social media using the hashtag ConfPR, PR for President of the Republic, you know, very technical hashtag. So it's interesting to see how social media is being used as a political tool now, both by, um, you know, the, the, I suppose, supporters of the president with these technocratic sort of hashtags and then by his opponents with, you know, a very politicised politicized slogan. You know, I do remember a number of years ago, in fact, only a few years ago, arguing with some of our colleagues that it, Twitter was not just for teenagers, and I think I've been proven right. It's for the journals too. James Creedon, thank you so much, as always. Thanks, That's man. James Creedon with Media Watch. But do stay with us, because coming up, we'll be taking a look at what's been making waves out there in cyberspace.